Hello and welcome to CMC Markets and this month's non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday the 6th of July. Before we get started I have to get the small matter of some revised risk warnings out of the way so um, we will uh, we will do that bit of housekeeping now. Uh, been slightly amended since the change of regulations um, that took effect at the beginning of this month so just quickly uh, make our way through those so that you can digest them and then we can then we can get started on the order of business for the day which is obviously the US payrolls report now we have got a bit of a flavour of the payrolls report when the ADP June numbers were released yesterday they came in slightly below expectations we're expecting a number in the region of 189,000 came in at 177,000 but to offset that the previous month's numbers were revised up so the net change on the two month period was minus 1,000 so I don't think I don't think there was be anything particularly to be concerned about with respect to the US labor market it still appears to be in fairly decent shape certainly US policymakers overnight didn't have any concerns apart from the fact that they were a little bit concerned that the US economy might be running a little bit hot as I lead up to the payrolls numbers I'll obviously be looking at the data um, we also have Canadian payrolls as well so I'll obviously have a look at them and look at the key numbers to expect there particularly in light of the fact that we have a Bank of Canada rate meeting on the 11th of July next week and I think a decent payrolls number on Canadian jobs would pretty much um, guarantee a rate rise from the Bank of Canada next week because over the course of the past few weeks Canadian jobs data has or Canadian economic data rather has been fairly positive and I think the Bank of Canada will be reluctant for that gap between US rates and Canadian rates to get too wide and the, and the Bank of Canada hasn't raised rates this year whereas the Federal Reserve has raised rates twice so I think against that backdrop unless we get an absolutely diabolical Canadian jobs figure then I think the Bank of Canada could be minded to push rates up by 25 basis points when they meet um, next week on the 11th of July despite concerns about NAFTA and obviously the implementation of tariffs which um, Canada has put on um, Chinese steel um, in response to the the US tariffs um, on pretty much everybody else's steel and this is I think one of the con one of the concerns that's likely to continue to linger over the course of the next few weeks the tariffs on US goods and Chinese goods have both taken effect uh, China basically followed up the US measures pretty much soon after despite threats from President Trump in Montana that if China responded to US tariffs that he would implement uh, the potential for another 200 billion dollars on top of that and another 300 billion dollars on top of that um, markets don't appear to be overly concerned about that at the moment and to be quite honest I don't think they need to be because any implementation of new tariffs is going to take quite some time to come to pass and a lot of water can flow under the bridge between threatening to impose tariffs to actually getting them implemented and if you think about where we are now and where we were in April May um, it's taken a while for the current tariffs to come into effect so that's not to say that the mere prospect of tariffs won't cause a little bit of risk aversion and that's what I really want to talk about I think over the course of the next few minutes ahead of today's payrolls reports because ultimately whatever the tariff situation is the prospect for further gains in equity markets is I think likely to be fairly limited while we have that overhang and at the moment we are pushing against some very key resistance levels on the DAX and on the FTSE 100 and these are quite clear um, in my chart forum post earlier this morning I highlighted that um, with respect to the DAX with a resistance level around about 12,554 and that was quite significant that particular 
um, th that particular point simply because it also was the lows that we saw in May and technical analysis is always the it's always the study of support and resistance reversing roles what have you and um, basically acting as support and resistance levels um, trading levels over the course of a given time period so what we've got here 12,554 on the DAX if we break through that then I think there's a decent chance we could potentially break up towards 12,750 while we're below that then the risk reward would suggest that um, the market is going to struggle to push it back above those particular levels now we have seen a bit of a rally this week on the back of a report that um, the American ambassador to Germany talked to German car executives about the possibility that the US might suspend threats of tariffs on autos if the EU removed equivalent blocks on US vehicles well you know that is that is all well and good um, but unfortunately that's not something that they can do unilaterally it's certainly against WTO rules for the US and Germany or even the EU for a start it would have to be in it would have to be agreed at EU level and I think there's some doubt that smaller European countries would agree to a sectoral carve-out for German and French automakers on the basis of US tariffs because ultimately it would be once again Germany and France getting special treatment at the rest of the EU and it's something that Angela Merkel the German Chancellor sort of talks about um, in comments that she made um, to German um, German parliamentarians yesterday so for now what we've got is resistance levels coming in on the DAX around about 12,550 we're pretty much down towards the lows of the day we've drifted down into negative territory um, for the day um, we could head back to around about 12,450 but albeit we are in positive territory for the week the economic data by and large has been fairly positive this week so if we didn't have all these trade concerns I think the outlook would be much more much easier I think to predict for equity markets it's a similar sort of story on the UK 100 ladies and gentlemen look at this channel that I've drawn in here on the FTSE it's a beautiful channel it really is and we've got a really nice resistance level up uh, up at just above these peaks here around about the peaks that we saw earlier earlier this week around about 7707 we can see that just by clicking on this little um, cross here rolling across to the actual candle itself and if you just look in the top left corner here you've got open high low close box there so I'm just highlighting over that and we can see the high for that particular day is 7,707. So round about, if we get a rebound today in the FTSE 100 up to around the 50 day moving average and slightly above that, um, there's certainly resistance around about 7,650 on a rebound higher. So it, would, it does happen to be the highs of the week so I think the odds of us getting up there are pretty remote but if we do then certainly I think there's an opportunity to maybe um, take profits on any long positions that you might have moving on to the dollar because I think once again it's it's a usual refrain on my part but I think the most important data point today and if we look at the dollar index we can see that here and the most important data point today is going to be the wages numbers and in particular this support here on the dollar index it's a very big support it also more or less coincides with around about 117.30 50 area on euro dollar which is pretty much where we are at the moment on euro dollar you know you know my views on the correlation between the two dollar index if the dollar index sells off fairly aggressively then what will happen is euro dollar will go up and vice versa. Now at the moment we're finding decent support on the dollar index at around about 94.15 uh, and that's the equivalent of this sort of low point here. We are above that. Euro dollar has ratcheted higher a little bit and it's, pu it's pushing up against the highs of the week around about 117.25 but if we if we look if we look at a uh, euro dollar 
and this is the area that I'm paying particular attention to and this is something that I've talked about in my morning note this area between 117.25 and 30 is quite a big level on the 4 hour chart I've drawn it in there one thing I am concerned about is that the the, the lows are getting higher on the rebound up from the lows that we saw at the end of June, beginning of July. So the buyers are waiting a much less amount of time before getting back in. So we could certainly see a move higher on a break above 117.40.50 um, and head towards around about the highs that we saw um, in the middle of June or around about the beginning of June at uh, uh, just above the 118 area. So if we get if we get a poor number a poor jobs number or a poor wages number uh, that could see the dollar slip back and we could see euro dollar move back up to 117.70 117.80 i'm still of the opinion that this 3050 level should hold um, we could well get a fairly decent payrolls number but again it will depend on the wages number and this is the number here that i'm talking about if i'm just going to move this out here you can see this number here keep an eye on this number here average earnings anything less than 2.8 is a dollar negative okay um, the highest wage monthly wage number this year has been 2.9 percent that was in January and that was um, as a result of an increase in the minimum wage coming in at the beginning of the year which pushed the wages number higher since then we've been averaging around about 2.6 2.7 percent uh, so if we don't get that, and in question to the morning notes, it is posted on Insights, yes. Um, it's the morning call. Um, with respect to um, the average earnings, I'd really want to see something in the region of 2.8, 2.9, because an awful lot of the refrain that we're hearing out of employers in the, in the US is that they can't fill the jobs they're advertising, despite the fact that um, the unemployment rate is at a multi-year lows of 3.8%. So my argument to that would be we'll basically offer higher wages and then you might get more people interested, but that may take some time to filter through. But certainly at the moment, 117.25.30 on euro dollar looks like a, a decent barrier. We can see it highlighted there. Support, support, resistance, resistance. So I'll be keeping an eye on that in the event of a poor number because we could see a spike up to 117.50 if we do get a poor number. But more importantly, looking at the cable here, that's suffering from a little bit of Brexit relief, Brexit tiredness or what have you. We've had a bullish reversal on cable earlier this week, or the end of last week. So I think as long as we hold above 132 on the pound, then I think we could well move up a little bit towards 133, 130, 133, 134. I don't expect that to happen today. Quickly got to move on to the Canadian dollar, because obviously it is the Canadian jobs report today. And that's the number down there, 24,000. If we get a decent positive number, then it's likely the Bank of Canada will raise rates next week. So that means that we could get a strong Canada and a break of this key support level here um, at 130.130. If we get a weak US number and a strong Canada number, then watch out below for Canadian dollar. We could go to 130.75 very, very quickly. So please bear that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, with respect to these numbers here, the unemployment rate. If that comes in at 3.8, 3.9%, not really that concerned. 195 again, the expectation for US payrolls, slightly weaker than the number that we saw in May. Again, not overly concerned if that misses to the upside or the downside by a significant amount. If it's a low number, it could just mean that the US labor market is very, very tight and they're not being able to job, they're not being able to fill the jobs that are available. Not that the jobs openings aren't there, they just can't basically get the numbers through the door. And that's where this number here comes in. So while we, while we head into the numbers, those are the, those are the levels that I'm looking at. Quickly look at the S&P. Again, big resistance at 27.46 so I'll be looking for um, a little, few sellers to come in around about that level 27.46 and a retest towards the downside with trade tensions and everything else I think it's going to be very difficult to ascertain where we're going to go to but ultimately this is all about the dollar
Okay, so Canadian jobs have added 31,000. My numbers are late. Average hourly earnings came in at 2.7, so that's weaker than expected. So that's dollar negative. That means euro dollar is going to head higher. June payroll is 213,000, um, and that's better than expected. And US trade deficit, 43.1 billion. Here we, here we go. And the unemployment rates jumped to 4% in the US. So all in all that's not a particularly great set of numbers um, for the dollar. Um, we are testing towards the upside. There is slightly dollar weaker component going on here. Trying to find out why the unemployment rate has actually um, come in quite significantly higher and uh, maybe that could be because the participation rate has gone up. There could be any number of reasons for that. It could just mean that more people are coming back into the workforce. So I'm going to check the labour participation rate for that to establish whether or not that has been a reason the unemployment rate has gone up. And yes, the, the participation rate has increased from 60... Um, no, that's the Canadian participation rate. Let me see if I can find it. 62.9. So yeah, the labour force participation rate has gone from 62.7 to 62.9. That's why the unemployment rate has jumped from 3.8 to 4%. Um, so more people are coming back into the workforce. That has pushed the participation rate up. So the, the fact that the unemployment rate has gone back to 4% is it's disappointing, but it's certainly not the end of the world. Canadian jobs report better than expected by the looks of it um, and as a result we've seen the Canadian dollar push lower and the likelihood is we'll probably can we'll probably see it start to head back towards that 130, 130 to, below 131 towards 1 130 80 and with respect to euro dollar watching that 130 117 and a half area um, but overall it's the dollar's probably going to remain a little bit weaker for the rest of the day as a result of that uh, weaker average earnings number. And that is really disappointing because when you've got a tight labour market, when you've got more people coming back into the workforce, you would expect to see this number come back towards 2. Point, to head back towards 2.9% and 3%. And maybe that's why Mr Trump didn't tweet about the jobs report this month. Maybe... It's not a particularly um, noteworthy number that unemployment has just jumped back from 3.8 to 4%. You can't really sell that on the hustings. Oh, yes, unemployment rate's gone back to 4%. Make America great again, yada, yada, yada. Doesn't really, doesn't really um, swing well. So we've got US markets heading back towards the top of their recent ranges. Not surprisingly, because there will be a perception that maybe that will make the Fed slightly more towards the dovish side because inflation isn't so much of a concern but again I'm watching this 2746 area and I think it's going to be very difficult for US markets to really push significantly beyond that yes momentum is starting to turn positive yes we've seen a fairly positive week but in a holiday shortened week for US investors are they going to be wanting to go home long over the weekend and my hunch would be that they probably won't so we've seen some good gains this week I'm, I would I would suggest that the likelihood of further aggressive buying is probably likely to be limited in terms of further upside, particularly when we've got this resistance level through here at, tw at 27.46. If we look at the Dow, um, we've got a similar sort of area of resistance coming in on this particular chart here. As you can see, we've been quite volatile on the Dow. You can see that from the very long shadows on the daily candles you can see that we've tried the top side we've tried the downside and the volatility has been there the direction hasn't so again it's difficult to really say with any degree of certainty where the Dow is going but certainly I think if we if we take it down and make it slightly shorter term you can probably draw a nice little line through these highs there and a nice little line through these lows there to draw what is what looks a quite a nice little triangle there we go, right there, and there we go, right there, and uh, yeah, that's quite a nice little, uh, that's, that's quite a nice little pattern um, unfolding there. So I might might keep an eye on that this afternoon to see whether or not uh, we get a breakout of it um, over the course of the next few hours. 
not forgetting that obviously the official US session opens in 55 minutes time. Um, if any of you have any other questions or any questions at all on what I've been talking about or whether you want me to talk about a particular um, a particular product that I haven't quite touched upon yet please feel free to direct a question over. I'm watching your questions as they come in um, and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you might have with respect to um, with respect to um, any of the uh, markets that we cover. Dollar Yen it's pretty much a snoozeville Dollar Yen at the moment we're looking at um, a fairly tight range on that I think the fact that we've had a fairly weak wages number will limit the upside to around about 110.75 and we'll probably look to test to around about 110.20 over the course of the afternoon session. Sadly I think the volatility this afternoon is likely to be fairly limited given it's US, it was the 4th of July holiday I think a lot of US traders will probably have taken extended um, some extended time off. Okay I'm being asked EuroCAD so let's have a quick look at that in light of the Canadian jobs report. Um, quite surprised to see um, EuroCAD actually uh, push higher. So let's have a quick look at the oscillator on that because you would expect Canada not to weaken but to strengthen on the back of those th of that Canadian jobs report. Let me just... Okay. Well the line of least resistance on EuroCAD sir is higher. We've got a nice trend line coming in from the lows here, which I can draw in right there. And we have, if I now drill it down into the four hour chart to try and figure out where the next resistance level is. And the next resistance level is through these peaks here around about 154.60. So in the short term I think the upside in EuroCAD is likely to be capped around 154.60 but given the longer term direction of this particular pair I would expect to see um, a move up towards these previous highs that we saw at the end of June which currently comes in at around about 155.90. So in a definite uptrend on EuroCAD, we'd certainly look to buy dips, maybe sell a little bit into the rally here, but that would be very counter trend and would be something that I'd be a little bit reluctant to do, certainly um, certainly ahead of the weekend in any case, because the risks of you being wrong are much more are much higher than they are if you, than if you buy the dip where you have support on the trend line and also where you have the 50 and 200 day moving average. So that is EuroCAD, very much in a decent uptrend. But the dollar does appear to be showing further signs of weakness and it looks to me as if we're probably going to head towards 118 in Euro dollar and head up towards 133.20 in, um, in cable and head down towards 110.25. So a weaker dollar should be generally positive for US equities. Um, that should underpin it. Um, but uh, overall, I would expect a fairly modest um, trading session over the course of the rest of the uh, next three or four hours. Let's have a quick look at the Aussie dollar, because that's taken a bit of a battering in recent times. And that again is also pushing up towards um, the top end of this week's range, with the potential that we could actually be carving out a little bit of a bottom down here. There's a nice little resistance coming in currently where we are at the moment. But it's in the context of an overall downtrend. So I think any dollar weakness in the Aussie is likely to be confined to the top of this trend line, this, this trend line that I've drawn in from the January highs here. So I would expect to see any short squeeze in the Aussie head back towards around about 75.20, 75.30. Let's look at gold. Gold has got to be one of those currents or those commodities that's really, really um, had me scratching my head because ultimately given all the concerns that we've had about trade and everything else you would expect gold to be an awful lot higher and it's not it's actually come down but there does appear to be some signs that maybe we're on the cusp of a little bit of a rebound let's look at this here now those of you who listen to my webinars on a fairly regular basis will know that I like this 
particular pattern. It's a bullish engulfing pattern on the daily candle and that generally means that um, we could well see a reversal of the prior trend. Well we have a prior trend, this is it, from the April peaks we've come down quite a bit from 1350 to 1250. We've carved out a little bit of a bottom down here and we're finding a little bit of support on this dotted line around about 1252 1253. I think while we hold above the 1250 area on gold I think there's a good chance we could head back to 1275 over the course of the next few days. So as I say recap as long as we hold above 1250 then I think there's a decent probability we could head back towards 1275. Um, oil prices our old favourite. President Trump loves tweeting about them um, amongst other things, he likes tweeting about a lot of things, but oil prices is one of his um, it's one of his bugbears with his war on pretty much everyone except um, except his wife, I think. And even then, that's under debate. We look as if we could well have seen a little bit of a top here. Um, we are starting to roll over on Brent crude. Um, we didn't take out the highs that we saw in May, even though U.S. crude prices actually did take out the highs that we saw earlier this year. Nonetheless, there does appear to be a little bit of weakness starting to creep in. The oscillators started to roll over. We're finding a little bit of support on the 50-day moving average. But if we break below the 50-day moving average, and looking at this here, we've already broken below the lows that we saw on the 3rd of July at 76.85. And we're now at 76.55. We could well come back and retest this trend line here. But make no mistakes, even if we do see a little bit of oil weakness, um, we've still got the potential to come all the way back to around about $73 or $74 a barrel. And we're still in the overall uptrend that we've been in since the beginning of the year. Mr Trump wants higher, lower oil prices, but he's determined to turn the screw on OPEC to make sure they keep the taps wide open, despite the fact that he's decided to implement sanctions on Iran. Now this is interesting. We've broken below this key 7265 area on US WTI. Now that suggests to me that we could well be heading for a nice correction on WTI. So I think with respect to this, um, it, we, now that we've broken below this key support level, as long as we stay below this peak here, uh, 73.40 then we could well see a move back towards $70 a barrel over the course of the next few days but again you know taking positions ahead of the weekend um, is always a dangerous thing because ultimately you don't know what could happen over the weekend something could happen in the Straits of Hormuz and the oil price could spike higher so um, and Iran have already threatened to try and block the Straits of Hormuz and if they try and do that you can be rest assured the United States Navy will have something to say about it and that could actually push oil prices quite aggressively higher. Mm. I've just been asked what I'm not clear about with oil is that Trump is going for the juggler so to speak with Iran but if they stop supplying to the market surely price is going to go up. Yeah that's absolutely right that is exactly what has happened but that's also why President Trump has asked OPEC or Saudi Arabia in particular to open the taps to try and compensate for the loss of Iran's exports or Iran's production. Unfortunately for President Trump, I don't think maths is his strong point because Iran pumps out 3.8 million barrels a day. Saudi spare capacity is only around about 2 million barrels a day. So there's still a 1.8 million barrel shortfall. That being said, um, too much oil or not enough oil is not a problem that the US shale producers have. The biggest problem the US shale producers have is getting the oil out to market and turning it into gasoline and other distillates because at the moment um, refining capacity is pretty much at its limit and it's getting it around the country to where it's needed. However, he wants to keep prices low because he doesn't want US gasoline prices to move anywhere near towards $4 a gallon ahead of the midterms which are in November. So 
his embargo on Iranian oil will drive prices up, and it has driven prices up. But the big question is, where is the ceiling on crude prices? Now, for WTI, it's probably around about $75 a barrel. For Brent, it's $80 a barrel. But what that doesn't price in is the risk premium if Iran carries out its threat to, to blockade the Straits of Hormuz. Because if they do that, then oil prices could go even higher. Now, there is a danger to them doing that. If they send hot oil prices through the roof, they could trigger a global recession, which will then kill demand at source, and then they won't be able to sell any oil, or certainly they won't be able to sell anywhere near as much as oil, much oil as they would like to. So, we're in interesting times. So, in terms of crude prices, we do appear to have broken down in US crude, and we could well head back towards $70 a barrel. Um, Brent crude prices look as if they're about to roll over, but I wouldn't expect the down. I would expect the downside to be fairly limited. So I'm hoping that answers your question on oil prices. If it doesn't, please feel free to ask a follow-up. Um, one other thing that has been a little bit concerning is, despite the fact that we've seen significant improvements in economic data over the past few weeks, copper prices, platinum prices, commodity prices have been falling and that does suggest that does appear to suggest that maybe the recovery that we're seeing in equity markets is fragile because generally if the economic recovery is doing well globally demand for this sort of product copper platinum palladium should be fairly positive and it's not so there are concerns there they could be to do with trade they could be to do with the fact that people aren't ordering platinum and palladium for catalytic converters and for cars because they're worried about tariffs on cars. So there could be a trade element to that. But it is concerning when demand for basic resource materials starts to decline. Another thing I'm keeping an eye out for is this break in the Hong Kong China rate shares index, which has broken its 200 day moving average, which would appear to suggest that we could be in line for further decline it's in Hong Kong China rate shares over the course of the next few weeks. We can also see that despite the fact that we've had an awful lot of headlines about massive declines in Chinese markets, we're still above the lows that we saw at the beginning of 2017. So we've still got some way to go before we can start talking about a significant rout. If we fall below 10,000, I'd start to get a little bit worried. We're well, we're well north of that at the moment, but certainly that is something to keep an eye out for in terms of Chinese markets over the course of the next few days and the next few weeks. Okay, so it's 13.48, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's non-farm payrolls for this month. Um, unless anyone has any questions, I'm going to wrap this up now. I will obviously... Um, Record, I'm, I am recording this, so I will post this online afterwards if you want to listen to it back. But otherwise, I'd like to once again thank you for tuning in and um, wish you all a very nice weekend and the rest of the trading week. And uh, look forward to speaking to you next month when the July payrolls report comes out. Thanks very much for listening, guys, and uh, have a good weekend. <laughs>